So collimation simply means aligning or tuning up the optics of your telescope. You might think of it the same as tuning a musical instrument. So if you play the guitar, you would tune your guitar before you play because you want to get the best possible sound. So it's the same with your telescope. Before you use it, you want to make sure that the optics are in tune so that you'll get the best possible view. And we do this by making slight adjustments to the primary and the secondary mirrors. So the first thing to do is make sure that all the various bolts or fasteners that hold your scope together are tight and there's no loose parts. On your primary mirror there's usually a white ring or a donut that marks the exact centre. This is useful because this is what you'll be aiming at for the first part of your alignment. And this is what the primary mirror looks like reflected in the secondary mirror through the eyepiece. So imagine a laser beam going straight through the eyepiece, bouncing off of the small secondary mirror and then down onto the center dot of the primary. Then stop imagining it and actually use a laser beam, or a laser collimator as they're known. Now there's various different brands of laser collimators. They're available in two inch, one inch. Some of them like this one have a laser that comes straight out of the bottom. Others have angled targets, but essentially they're all the same thing. They fire a straight laser beam and then reflect off of the secondary, down onto the primary, and then back up into the target of the laser collimator. You'll want to collimate in daytime because obviously it makes everything easier to see. And then you can check and make adjustments later once you're out onto the stars. So as you can see here, the laser is hitting the primary and the red dot is sitting just outside the donut. To center it, you'll need to make small adjustments using the three adjustment screws that are on the secondary. So by loosening and tightening these, you can get the laser to hit exactly the center of the donut. Just make sure you don't over tighten or over loosen these. Uh, don't twist the mirror by loosening the center screw because your scope will be factory collimated and you shouldn't need to do this at this stage. Now you adjust the primary in the same way using the three adjustment bolts at the bottom to ensure the laser is pointing straight back up into the target. If your scope has mirror locking bolts, loosen these. These are for helping to keep the mirror sitting in place on the mirror cell and aren't used for collimation. The collimation bolts will have springs and will push against the mirror cell. So pick one and looking back up at the target, tighten or loosen it and see how this moves the red dot. The aim here is that you make slight adjustments to one of the three of these bolts at a time until the red dot is centered in the target. Once centered, you can lock the mirror. Again, don't over tighten the mirror locking bolts as doing so can knock the collimation out. A good practice is to move the scope up and down in altitude just to check that the collimation stays in place and the mirror is sitting good and firm in the cell. The final check to see if the scope is collimated or not is to look at a defocused star. So you should do this when you first get your scope to see how much collimation, if any, it needs. Uh, a word of warning here, the scene conditions need to be very good to get accurate results. So pick a night where there is no turbulence in the atmosphere, the stars are nice pinpoints and not twinkling and that your mirror is nicely cooled. The left hand side here you can see an out of focus star and the diffraction rings um, that the defocusing creates. So if the scope has good collimation, the rings are concentric and you'll see nice sharp views showing fine detail at high magnification, as in this picture of Copernicus I took to demonstrate. On the right, the scope is out of collimation and you can see that the rings aren't concentric. The result is a blurred view and the details are lost at high magnification. So if this is what you're seeing when you defocus the star, it's time to collimate. And that's pretty much how you collimate a Dobsonian telescope with a laser collimator. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing and we'll see you next time.